Hello, everyone. A good assistant is always going to be one of the best tools that anyone has. The assistant may not get credit for what they do, but what they do is instrumental to the mission of either a business, a church, or whatever. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the birth of St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was the assistant par excellence. He was the one who desired and was called to serve God by preparing the people of the time for the coming of Christ. The late Father Bob Flagg, who was the vocation director for the Archdiocese for many years and a faculty member at the seminary, used to tell us with tongue in cheek in a way, but in a very real way, um, that when you go to a parish, don't remember the words of Christ, but remember the words of St. John the Baptist. And they are, I am not the Messiah. He said it to kind of keep us in track of what we're there for as priests. But I've reflected on that over the 22 years of my priesthood in seeing the wisdom behind Father Flagg's advice to us as we went off into ministry. John the Baptist truly believed this. He was not the Messiah, but he was there to prepare people for the Messiah, to calling them to repentance, to calling them to change their lives, to calling them to recognize Christ and follow him. One of the more well-known lines of John the Baptist in scripture, which speaks to this so beautifully is, he said, in speaking of Christ, he must increase and I must decrease. He must increase, so I must decrease. He speaks of Christ as the one coming after me ranks before me. I am not worthy to fasten his sandals. As Father Flagg had said for us as new priests, really fits for all Christians. We are not the Messiah. John the Baptist shows us all how to be disciples, how to make Christ increase over our own personalities and desires, how to go and tell people about Christ, inviting them into a relationship with Christ. John the Baptist is instrumental in our Christian faith and a great person to reflect on today. There are many instrumental people throughout our parish who help people come to Christ, whether it's in their volunteering uh, throughout the year as catechists and ministers in the church, those who visit the homebound, um, but in a specific way right now, I want to show my gratitude to those who assist us to help the Mass go well. Mass attendance continues to grow, and we continue to monitor that growth. 
We ask you to continue to sign up through Sign Up Genius by calling the office. When you call the office, most likely you may, leave, may need to leave a voicemail message, leave your name, phone number, email if you have it, and what mass you want to attend. As I said, we're grateful to all of our volunteers. As we just finished our fourth weekend back to masses, we noticed that th people are getting more familiar with things. People are understanding what we need to do. People are under uh, kind of settling into some of the new guidelines that we have to follow because we don't know how long those guidelines will be there. With that familiarity, we need to still be attentive to the need for volunteers at all the masses before and after. Um, it's very helpful to the limited staff that we have that people generously volunteer to uh, sanitize the church right after use. And, and we continue to ask you to consider that, but if you haven't had an opportunity and, and, and you do find the time to do it so that we don't get the same people having to do it every week. So uh, if you could consider that, that would be great. And there's a way that you can sign up through Sign Up Genius to volunteer so we can have an idea of who we have uh, and uh, what we have to work with. We're also looking for those who have served uh, over the years uh, and, and usually served during the week for um, as readers and extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist at our Masses on Sundays. I understand that there are still many who aren't comfortable coming back to Mass who might have some health concerns that prevent them from doing so, uh, and we respect that and we're not pushing you, uh, but we're asking those who are able to come back and who are readers or extraordinary ministers to consider helping in that way. Um, with the guidelines that are in place, I can assure you that readers and extraordinary ministers are protected um, from the possibility of getting infected as much as anyone else's. We continue to ask people to wear masks. There has been concern that some people are not uh, wearing masks the way that um, we should be. I understand better than anyone, or as well as anyone, masks are something we're not used to. They're something that can be uncomfortable. In the heat, they can be uncomfortable. Uh, with breathing, they can be uncomfortable. Um, if that's the case, um, while you're sitting, as long as you're six feet apart from the person, um, you can kind of lower the mask, uh, so you can expose your nose and breathe out of it. But we ask you if you are able to, to wear the mask properly throughout the mask so that, uh, those around you may feel confident that they're safe. There have been three cases in three different churches or collaboratives uh, where someone has tested positive uh, after attending mass. So we're still attentive to that uh, and we're still attentive that um, that can occur. If you're not feeling well, please do not come. If you're not feeling well, please do not come, especially if you aren't sure whether that not feeling well is a cold, allergies, or could be the beginning of the coronavirus. Uh, for the sake of others, uh, we ask that. There was one parish that had to shut down for two weeks after opening up because of the virus. would like to thank all of you again for your contributions. Um, the contributions continue to be, uh, I think, pretty strong uh, considering the 
not gathering fully in attendance and not uh, having the means to contribute like you used to because of perhaps change in your own job statuses and your own income. Um, we're grateful for what you're able to, to give. Uh, as we prepare the budget, as we're ending our fiscal year next week, uh, the budget for next year with, uh, with fancy formulas that some smart accountant figured out, uh, where we have to budget for 60% of our regular income, which is pretty much in line with what we've been receiving. Um, and we're very grateful for that. But with that, there has to be some effects on the parish in general. One of that's in staffing. And then the next week, we need to make some decisions about staffing, which could affect and will affect uh, what we're able to do here, and what we're able to offer as far as ministry. For instance, our office hours when we start back up on July 6th will only be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday uh, from 10 to 1. So our office hours will be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 10 to 1 in the main office uh, will be the only office open, and that's the office at St. Teresa's. So we are cutting back there. We are cutting back in other ways, and we'll be making those announcements as they come. We are entering into the last month of our three parishes as they are. Starting on August 1st, we become one parish territory and entity the entire town. Our three worship sites, our three churches will remain as they are. At this point, we may have to make decisions in the future about what we're able to sustain. I understand that I've only been here a year. And for many of you who have spent your lives in Bill Ricker, or most of your lives in Bill Ricker, that there's emotion that there's change, that there's memories that go with each church uh, and each parish. But as I pointed out in a previous video, there have been changes all along in the history of these three parishes. There's been expansion, there's been new buildings, there's been divesting of land. Whenever we reach change, our human dynamic is affected and we go into kind of a protective mode. And there's a beautiful prayer that I'd like to include in our prayers today that comes from the beginning of every session of the Vatican II Council. It's a beautiful prayer uh, to start meetings, but it's a beautiful prayer for our parishes in a time like this, asking us to be open to the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's one of the uh, few prayers that is addressed to the Holy Spirit. Um, that we trust that God is leading us through his Holy Spirit as he's led the church throughout the world. And that you look at the history of the church and you see the changes that came about as time went on. And we've always been guided by the Holy Spirit. So let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, conscious of our sinfulness, but aware that we gather in your name. Come to us, remain with us, and enlighten our hearts. Give us light and strength to know your will, to make it our own, and to live it in our lives. Guide us by your wisdom, support us by your power. 
you are God, sharing the glory of Father and Son. You desire justice for all, enable us to uphold the rights of others, do not allow us to be misled by ignorance or corrupted by fear or favor. Unite us to yourself in a bond of love and keep us faithful to all that is true. As we gather in your name, may we temper justice with love so that all our decisions may be pleasing to you and earn the reward promised to good and faithful servants. You live and reign with the Father and the Son, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. St. John the Baptist, pray for us. St. Andrew, pray for us. St. Matthew, pray for us. St. Teresa of Lisieux, pray for us. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a great week, everyone.